Good morning, lads. Today, we have the grand task of building the royal library. And unlike the throne room here that I said doesn't need to be grand, it needs to be functional, a library needs to be grand in order to be functional. So this is going to be a magnificent in size and might even take two episodes to complete. So let's go ahead and get started busting out this wall. Well, that's two pickaxes down already. This project is indeed very massive. So, since I lost my backup pickaxes, I'm going to make two more. And to do that, you don't have to waste a single diamond. I mean, I don't. You literally just, literally just have to buy it from this guy and then go back down. I believe I already purchased all the books I'll need. That's efficiency five, efficiency five and breaking and mending um this one already has silk touch and i also want fortune unfortunately i think <laughs> fortunately i believe i only have a fortune one guy so i'll have to buy that book a lot so that's fortune two fortune two again and that's fortune three this is going to take a lot of levels though fortunately i have a few so we had 8 18 let's see how much this costs wow almost a hundred levels that's that's expensive. And of course, they'll both need to be netherite because right now it only, well, that's unfortunate, it doesn't show you. I'll have to break some. Here we go. So it has 1,561 and the netherite has 2,031. So that's near 500 difference. Plus with unbreaking, that's several thousand blocks difference between each repair but to do that I am gonna have to sacrifice some of my precious ingots I'll actually put this right here because it kind of blends in maybe there that'll do so I'm gonna have to sacrifice four of those which is a little sad Ah. Clumsy. There it is. Craft it into another ingot. And there we go. We got our backup pickaxes. We only forgot to name them. But we can do that when we repair these two up at the gold farm and i say up at the gold farm because i built it obviously on the nether roof
not only on the nether roof, but way up above the nether roof. This is obviously El Mango's design, but I built it here. Let's see. I wonder if. Oh, I forgot to despawn everything first. That's going to take a minute. There we go. Now I have hostile mobs turned off because otherwise this farm is very loud and annoying. But. The XP that, and gold that you get is quite magnificent. Let's go ahead and rename these. Which one's this? Silk Touch. It can be Silky too. Eight levels, huh? That's expensive. And this one's Blessing, so this one will be Favor. Thirty-two levels for a name. That can't be right. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Whatever. Make that a hundred and fifty levels that I've lost. And look at that, our pickaxes are already almost repaired. There we go. They're all done. That's Silk, Silky 2, Blessing, and Favor. All completely ready. Also topped off the shovel. Back to mining. That is a lot dug out and it's helped me realize some of the scale that I'm looking for. So that's the door there. This is just really, really too wide. Place a line of torches. This will be this would be a hundred blocks across. And that's where I'm gonna draw the line. I'm not actually gonna go that far deep because that's just more space than I am going to end up wanting. This is going to be plenty big. So I'm only gonna make it 100 blocks that direction. It's already 100 blocks this direction. And then this is going to be 200 blocks in this direction. But I'm not gonna to get to that today. Now I just need to finish mining out all of that and then I can start taking care of the ceiling.
a lot more progress made. I wanted to finish off this pickaxe before I checked in, but I ran out of beacon range. I still don't have zoom. I did finish off those three pickaxes, but right when you get to this spot here is where the beacon runs out. So I'll just go in a little bit and build another beacon. There you can see it's running out. So it'd be a waste of time to mine that out. Also expanded on the chest array a bit. Now I can put all the cobble deep slate here, all the normal deep slate here. I've got gravel in these, tough will be in these. This will be the ores. Um, this is I've got my tools and torches and all the things. So I'm gonna repair these pickaxes build like four more beacons and then get back to mining. And I'm not lacking in beacons. I just thought of a good temporary use of this hall right here. I'm gonna put a portal here. Then I won't have to go all the way up and down the stairs a thousand times when I repair my pickaxes. Just be able to pop in the portal here. Don't know where it's gonna end up. Oh good, this is not a bad spot. Ideally, it would be on the roof, so I'll see if that's possible later. Right now, I'm just going to repair and keep mining. Thank you. 
that was a lot of mining. And here is the result of all that mining. This room is very large. And I'm very intentionally walking, not sprinting, not sprint jumping across. Just so you can feel how painfully long it takes just to walk across the room. Just to walk. Yep. Those time lapses were very fun to make. I hope you enjoyed them. Every time one of the camera angles changed, that represents a new day. So a different recording session. Are those heights different? Ooh, they're different by quite a bit. Which one's correct? I need to be at negative 44. This one is negative 46. Okay, so all this needs taken out too. Yay, more mining. I'll do that off camera though. But what I was saying was each one of the different camera angle changes represents a different day and several hours of mining. In all, it took me over 20 hours to mine out of this and that was over many weeks. I've been working at this for a very long time. So unfortunately, I won't be able to start building up the library itself this episode. But yeah, and I don't think with a project this big, I'll be able to finish it in a week. So I'll have some smaller videos in between, but I'll come out with the finished full library probably a couple weeks after this one is released. So stay tuned for that. I've already got a design planned out in a creative world and I'm super excited about sharing that. Well, that only took like an hour. Now to tear down the scaffolding that I had to put up. 13 more diamonds to boot. Well, that looks a thousand times better. And not only do I have that finished, but something else I haven't showed you is I added a bunch of chests to the back side of this because I was running out of space. Because even though I haven't filled half of all of these, I wanted this section to be deep slate and this section to be cobbled deep slate. But I've been preferring to use my um, fortune or non-silk touch. So I ended up with a lot more cobbled deep slate than I did normal deep slate, hence the extra storage in the back. For the official numbers, we'll start with the greatest and work our way to the lowest. So the thing that we got the most of was cobbled deep slate. At 26.7 double chests full, which is 92,275. So all these chests are full. I would flick through all of them, but that would just give you a headache. But, yep. So that's that. And then next is normal deep slate at 7.5 double chests full. Let's see, those two are empty, but about 7.5, 7.7, whatever you want to call this. But that comes in at around 26,611. Then we have tough, which I have only like 3.2 double chests of, which is 11,059-ish. Then dripstone, I only had a couple stacks. I rounded up this one, making it 448 dripstone. If you wanted to, you could subtract the seven and say 441, but who cares? Then we have red, deep slate redstone ore at 521, deep slate diamond ore at 294, uh, just over a stack of deep slate iron ore, just over two stacks of deep slate gold ore, and almost two stacks of deep slate lapis ore and also some accidental non-silk touch things it happens but yeah that's a pretty good haul 
thank you so much for watching this i hope you enjoyed the time lapses and all the progress that we've made so far today don't forget to like subscribe and all the other youtube things see ya